Okay, hey everybody. Uh, gonna load a video today of my uh, solar setup in my van. So we're gonna start up here, and uh, what you see there is um, six Renogy 160 watt panels. I got them on eBay. Um, they say 160 watts, but I think probably they're really 150. I don't know how they got away with saying 160, but who knows? All the other panels of the same size were 150, so. But uh, put those on here. I did six all in series for about 100 and, uh, 115 volts. And uh, I put them on this rail because they, they line up just perfect with this rail. And all you have to use are these typical L brackets. <clears throat> I use some that are pretty tall because there is a a little bit of a curve up in the roof and plus it has to clear these old panels these old panels are uh, flexible I put them on there to begin with because I was so concerned about being stealthy now I've pretty much given up on the whole stealth thing I mean they're just looking for us I just don't see any way around it unless you have a box truck with uh, fake uh, stickers on the side making it look like, look like a company vehicle but anyways, yeah, I digress. I got these rails on eBay, 300 bucks. They go pretty much all the way down. This is a 170 inch uh, wheelbase extended. So, you know, they probably come up a little bit short down there, maybe about a foot short, but that's okay. I couldn't got any more panels on here anyway. But uh, yeah, it pretty much runs the whole length. They're about 13 foot six all together like that. And I've only got about 14 foot to, pay, to play with, really. And um, also, I want to talk about uh, my fan placement. I didn't put it on the roof. And that's because I wanted to get as much up there as I could. Because it takes a lot. You know, if you want to have just, you know, basic things running and not have to wait, you have to put a lot up there. And uh, these line up just right if you have a Sprinter. Mine's a 2016. Um, they line up perfectly with the uh, rail um, width from this rail to the other rail. And like I said, all you need is the typical L brackets. They're shaped like an L. And uh, they have a little bit of wiggle room, you know, so you can get them in there without, uh, without things being all bound up. And uh, also, you know, if I would have used big panels, I would have only had, uh, you know probably half of, of these that I have and for peace of mind you know having all those L brackets holding that it makes me feel a lot better even though I only do 55 still on a windy day I have peace of mind when I'm doing 55 I have peace of mind that if the winds are doing you know 40 mile an hour gusts that I'm okay and that just happened recently as a matter of fact so they're all hooked up. I unhooked the old ones and uh, hooked these into the same line that the old ones were hooked to. It goes down through the roof through a uh, waterproof uh, junction box. And uh, I spray foamed uh, everything. So I used, um, what do they call that, expanding foam spray and did this whole thing. So I can't get in there and show you, so I'll just have to tell you about it. But Right about where the light's at is where it comes down, and then that's where I start the electrical conduit. It's uh, the flexible kind. Oh, I got it back up. Comes down right about here somewhere, just behind this light, and it's a flexible conduit, so you know you can get it through things without a whole lot of trouble. It can just kind of snake its way through, and then it comes down to this uh, switch here and comes out of the conduit, comes into the switch, so I can shut the panels off if I need to, if I'm doing something to fix or work on or remove the uh, charge controller. Goes back in, into more uh, flexible conduit, comes down the wall, and it's all inside the spray foam, and it comes right down to the outback controller. And, uh, these two come in and feed it for those panels up there these other two wires go down through the floor to a uh, 
uh, Robinson switch, uh, Reynolds, Reynolds connector, Roberts connector, something like that. It goes down to a connector down there so I can, below the van, so I can uh, throw on extra panels and just you know, lay them out on the ground so I can park in the shade and uh, still have, you know, plenty of, uh, plenty of juice. But uh, this is a Outback uh, FX60 and uh, it goes into it and then it uh, it's a uh, MPPT so it takes that 100 volts here I can kind of demonstrate here and it's saying 67 volts uh, if I didn't have any load on you know like I'm right now I'm washing the clothes uh, it would be about 115 volts but what it does is an MPP MPPT controller takes that high voltage and converts it down into a lower voltage to give you higher amps to where it can get more done and that's where it's at now MPPT float which is pretty good because I'm like halfway in the shade right now so it should be you know you'd figure I'd be doing a, a bulk charge but uh but yeah that also makes my point that you want a robust system a big system I'm trying to get this thing to, uh, to focus oh well um, you want a big system because then when you're doing things you know it can keep up with it all even when conditions aren't ideal like clouds like what I'm having right now uh, it's also late in the day <clears throat> so anyways then it comes out of that and now it's a much higher amperage and a much lower voltage so you got to get the you know the wires you know I, I went way overboard by the way with this this is like 12 volt wiring and it's coming out at about 48.5 volts and uh, going into the battery banks and probably pushing uh, right now only six amps but uh, here's my batteries that it goes into each one let me back up a little bit <laughs> Each one is 48 volts. There's four of them all together. It's hard to see through all that spaghetti, but each one's 48 volts. They have a, a battery management system. Each one has this little white box for a battery management to keep all the cells in line. No, no overcharging and no under, uh, no drawing the batteries down through low. It'll stop all that. So it's, a, it's like a battery, battery protector thing. So each one is 48 volts. I hook them all in um, parallel. So it's still 48 volts, but each one's 50 amp hours. So you, when you hook them in parallel, now you have 200 amp hours. Because 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, so now you got 200 amp hours, which is plenty. And. Um, then it goes uh, from there into the Outback inverter, which I've already covered this a little bit, but I'll just go ahead and do it again. It's a 3600 watt inverter, um, so it can do 3000 watts with ease, and that's probably about the most I ever push it. And um, this is the uh, switch for the uh, shore power so I can just switch this off and on right now because it's irrelevant now because I'm moon docking on the other side there's a you can't see it but on the other side there's a uh, 150 amp breaker that goes from the batteries to the uh, inverter there's also a 20 amp um, going to the uh, Incinolet and it's on a dedicated line there's a couple 15 amps for your just your other typical typical uh, outlets that I have throughout the van and uh, this is the junction this is the uh, fuse box uh, breaker box that you hook on to it and put all your uh, fuses and breakers in then since it's a 48 volt system I've got a lot of 12 volt stuff that I still have to deal with right so uh, for instance that that's 12 volts 
uh, the lighting's 12 volts, uh, all kinds of things are 12 volts. So, I got this uh, uh, can't remember the name of it, but I got this box to take the 48 volts down to 12 volts and uh, I got the heavy dutiest one I could find which is 30 amps so you know 30 amps is quite a bit so you know it's going to stay cool when you're just doing whatever and uh, it can also handle it when you're pushing a lot of things which sometimes I do and uh, it goes and puts 30 amps up into this fuse box And uh, it goes in the top, and then all these are going to things like lighting, the heater, um, the fan, um, you know, anything 12 volt. This takes care of it. <clears throat> and let's see here. That's pretty much it for that. Let me show you the uh, fan. So. I can kind of explain the what I was saying earlier about the the panels. I've got the panels on top, and uh, the thing about fans is that see how it's in the back door, and this is a uh, Max Air fan. I like them because if you're going to put your fan down low where people can, you know, try to look in or try to reach in, these, if you can see that or not, these really, you know, keep an honest man honest. Or it keeps, you know, a kid from messing around or whatever. You really can't get through that unless you, you know, go crazy on it. Someone could still technically take this by the hand and just probably rip it right open, you know, and you know try to reach in there and unlock the door but you'd have to be you know your van would be sitting by itself out somewhere which that never happens with me I I live in it so but anyways the thing about fans way back in the day when you know uh, campers were first being built and vans and whatnot a lot of times a vent didn't have a fan because you know it was a real dilemma for people back then about their battery running dead because you know all they had was those lead acid batteries they had no solar panels you know it was just it was just a pain so it was better off not to do the fan and let it but if someone wanted to get a fan they could buy a fan and then uh, they'd have to deal with you know keeping the electrical system charged up because of the fan so that's why they always stress the point of putting it on top it always had to be on top because if you don't have a fan, you want the heat to just rise out of it. Okay, so that's why that, that was such a thing. But you don't have to put it on top, especially now, because, you know, literally, literally everybody's got a fan now. Some people don't, but pretty much anything from, you know, the year 2000 up is going to have a fan. So, since you have a fan, you're going to use it. Uh, you don't have to put it on top so you can leave room for your panels so you can get more wattage up there so just put it in the back door like I did and uh, there really isn't any difference when you're using a fan there's really I mean I've, I've had it both ways I've had it with uh, I've had a camper that had it on top and I can't tell any difference it's all the same as long as you have that fan running now, if you do it with no fan, yeah, I could see how you'd have a, a air gap where, you know, hot air would, would accumulate up around your head area. But uh, you don't have to worry about that. I would put it on the back and uh, just save all that space up there for nothing but panels. And this is one of those things I talked about where I haven't seen anybody else do it. I mean, I think I might have seen one guy recently somewhere through all my scrolling through YouTube... But I'm not sure if that's what I saw. But there's probably other people that have done it, but I've never seen anybody, you know, on YouTube show it. So I think that's a really good idea. As long as you have a fan, that does not matter. Put it where it's out of the way. Put it in the back door. And you really can't go wrong with that. Um, and that's pretty much it.
yeah so uh i think uh next uh next um video is going to be about the bike it's a uh vector typhoon it uh it does 86 miles per hour and um, it's probably one of the fastest bikes in the united states as far as um, electric bicycles go so i'm going to do a uh, that'll be the next thing i'll do all right stay tuned everybody more videos on the way bye bye